So if you're watching this video, there's a very high chance you've searched for something like, how do I play Windows games on a Mac? And almost every time that question turns into parallels or crossover. And I covered this before. In fact, I made a video about this topic about four years ago, and it's my most viewed Mac gaming video ever. But that was from 2021, and a lot has changed since then. Back in the early days of Apple Silicon Macs, the ARM-based M-series chips were brand new with exciting new performance and battery efficiency, but a minefield in terms of knowing what games can run on these new Macs. Back in those days, crossover was much more limited, and DirectX 12 on Mac was basically impossible. And Parallels was often the safest recommendation for general Windows game compatibility. And if if you followed that same advice today, you lose either performance or pick the wrong tool entirely. So today I'm revisiting this topic properly with updated tools, games, and brand new advice for Mac gaming in 2026. So the biggest single change since 2021 is crossover. Crossover can now play DirectX 12 games thanks to Apple's game porting toolkit and a new translation layer called D3D Metal. And this is a huge deal for modern titles, to the extent that I would say that the majority of Windows single player games can now be played on a Mac through Crossover. Meanwhile, Parallels still cannot play DirectX 12 games, it's limited to DirectX 11. However, Parallels can do things that Crossover can't, like run some anti-cheat battle eye games, but only if the game supports DirectX 11, like Daisy and Escape from Tarkov. And Parallels can also run DirectX 9 and 32-bit games with far better performance than Crossover. But before we get into the comparison, let me explain how Parallels and Crossover actually work. Parallels allows you to run the full Windows 11 ARM experience in a virtual machine. It acts like a normal Windows installation that most people are familiar with, but within macOS. On the other hand, Crossover translates Windows games directly to macOS, no Windows installation. That difference explains everything. So when it comes to CPU and RAM usage, this is something that people massively underestimate. Running Parallels will split your Mac's performance. That's because when you're running Windows 11 ARM, you typically have to assign half of your CPU cores and half of your memory to the Windows Virtual Machine. That means that when you're running Windows 11 ARM, macOS is running, Windows is running in a little window, and your game never uses the full machine's performance. On lower RAM Macs, this is especially painful. For example, on this M5 Mac with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 10 CPU cores, we can only allocate up to eight gigabytes of RAM and four or five CPU cores. And there's also another layer of performance degradation. Virtually all Windows games are x86, and for it to work on Windows 11 ARM, it uses Microsoft's translation layer called Prism, which translates x86 to ARM. So it's kind of a miracle that Windows 11 ARM works on parallels as well as it does. And when you have it full screened, it really feels like you're just using a regular Windows computer, and it's amazing to have actual playable game performance in a virtual machine on a Mac. Crossover, on the other hand, can take advantage of your entire Mac's hardware, all the CPU cores, all the available memory, and that's why Crossover often delivers higher frame rates, better frame pricing, and fewer performance dips. And it's astounding that Crossover works as well as it does, because there are actually three translation layers at play, Windows to Mac OS through Wine, DirectX to Metal, Apple's Graphics API through D3D Metal, or alternatively a choice of Wine D3D, DXMT, or DXVK, and the translation of x86 Intel binaries to Apple's ARM chipset through Rosetta 2 built into the Mac hardware. And Crossover's Windows game compatibility can be limited, but the frontier changes every day, with new versions of Wine, D3D Metal, and other technologies being updated virtually on a weekly basis. So let's anchor this with one of the games that I test out the most, the Windows version of Grand Theft Auto V. Right now, only the legacy DirectX 11 version works on a Mac, and you have a choice of running the game through Crossover or Parallels. So the single player campaign runs significantly better on Crossover. There is some compilation shader stutter, but performance is very playable and there's less overhead thanks to Apple's game porting toolkit and D3D Metal. And when we're running the offline single player campaign through a virtual machine on Parallels, the performance is noticeably worse. The big difference between Parallels and Crossover here is the fact that you can actually run GTA 5 Legacy online through Parallels, and this is impossible on Crossover. That's because Rockstar added Battle Eye anti-cheat support for Windows 11 ARM, and because we're running that operating system through the virtual machine, we could actually play this online. But just remember, a game like GTA 5 online is very demanding, especially being run through a virtual machine. And remember that we are testing this game out on the base M5 chip with the lowest amount of RAM. If you happen to have a more powerful Mac, for example, the M4 Mac with lots of RAM and CPU cores, then performance would improve considerably on parallels. And let's have a look at other real world games being played on a Mac. So Where Winds Meet is a modern demanding open world game. 
On the left, I'm trying to play this game through Parallels, through DirectX 11, and it's clearly very limited running on a base M5 Mac with only 16 gigabytes of RAM. I can only allocate eight gigabytes of RAM to the virtual machine. Even if I try to run this game in a window at the lowest settings, we aren't getting playable performance. However, the game runs far better on crossover. And even though this game is using a large amount of video memory, hitting the limits of the M5 Mac 16 gigabytes, the difference is night and day in favor of crossover. Next, we're looking at the Windows version of Final Fantasy VII Remake. On Parallels, you must force DirectX 11 mode because DirectX 12 isn't supported. And performance suffers badly when you only have half of your memory and half of the CPU cores. It's especially rough if you have a smaller than 16 gigabyte machine. On crossover, we have much better performance and much better memory usage, and we could potentially make use of DirectX 12 if we wanted to. And using crossover, we not only have the ability to play Final Fantasy VII Remake, but also its sequel Rebirth, which manages to run surprisingly well on this base M5 chip. So those are the big AAA high performance titles, but let's have a look at a few older games and situations where Parallels actually excels. For example, with Dragon Age Origins, this is an example of an older 32-bit game that works far better than being virtualized in Parallels than it does through Crossover. On Crossover, users are complaining that we have graphical glitches, that it's insanely buggy, but when we run it through Parallels, it runs virtually flawlessly. And it's a similar situation with Fallout New Vegas, another 32-bit DirectX 9 game that has insane replay value. When we're running this Windows game through Crossover, frame rates have actually improved considerably compared to the past, but Crossover isn't that good at running 32-bit games and applications. There's this annoying delay that happens when you press tab to open up the Pip-Boy that only happens on Crossover, and I also experienced random crashes as well. However, playing this on Parallels was rock solid. We managed to maximize frame rate, minimize stutters, and it's easily the best way to play Fallout New Vegas, especially if you wanted to use commonly used mod tools as well. And we're gonna take a look at indie and fan games. And this is an underrated strength of Parallels. For example, fan games like Pokemon Infinite Fusion, made for Windows in the engine called RPG Maker X, works perfectly on Parallels, but is more problematic through crossover. And another example is this fan-made game built for Windows in the Unity engine. I couldn't get the English translation patch working easily on crossover, whereas it's a cinch on Parallels and works perfectly. Indie and fan-made games often rely on older engines, strange launchers, very specific Windows behavior, and because Parallels is real Windows, these games often just work. Crossover can handle many of them, but Parallels is often the least painful option. Productivity. Parallels has a productivity advantage, and this matters if your Mac is also a work machine. Parallels absolutely destroys crossover for Windows productivity applications like Microsoft Office, Excel with macros, Word, AutoCAD, specialist Windows software. If you need a Windows app to behave exactly like Windows, Parallels is a safer, more predictable choice. Plus, you can also install other operating systems too, like Kali Linux or most other ARM Linux distributions, and even run them all simultaneously and still get good performance. Now let's talk about the cost. Firstly, I wanna say both Parallels and Crossover offer a fantastic 14-day free trial where you can test out your games before making any commitment. However, there are some big differences. So Parallels can be purchased as a standalone product, but it's much more expensive, but it's actually cheaper to buy the annual subscription. And just be aware that once this subscription runs out after a year, your license expires and you can't use it anymore. You need to resubscribe. Crossover Plus, however, gives you a perpetual license. That's 12 months of updates included from the day that you purchase. Every version that's released during that year is yours to keep forever. If you wanted the next version after 12 months, then you'd need to pay again. But if you have a current Crossover Plus license, you can also take advantage of renewal pricing, which is 50% off. Also a big plus, remember that when you're buying Crossover, you're supporting the company Codeweavers, the main contributors to the open source Wine and Proton projects, and a big reason why you can play Windows games on Linux and a Steam Deck too. However, if you are looking to save money, then make sure to click on the links in the description. I'm gonna be keeping my latest coupon codes for both Crossover and Parallels up to date. If you follow these links and make a purchase, you'll also help to support this channel and the content that I create. And remember that both Parallels and Crossover are not catch-all solutions. Unfortunately, a lot of Windows games won't work on either Parallels or Crossover, so make sure to subscribe to this channel to keep up with the latest Windows game compatibility news. So in summary, if you want to play modern DirectX 12 single-player games, Crossover will probably be able to run it. If you want the best performance when it's supported, Crossover is your best bet. If you wanted to play older indie fan games or 32-bit DirectX 9 games, Parallels is the way to go. And if you have a powerful Mac, for example, an M4 Max machine with lots of memory and CPU cores, then you can play some Battle Eye anti-cheat games on Parallels if they support DirectX 11. And if you make use of any Windows productivity applications and want to take advantage of a little bit of gaming, then Parallels is probably the solution for you. So final summary, in 2026, 
The truth is simple. There's no single best way to play Windows games on a Mac anymore. Crossover is a performance specialist and Parallels is a compatibility generalist. You can now choose per game, not per platform. If you comment to your Mac model and the game you're trying to run, I'll tell you exactly which one I'd try first. Plus there are other options to consider too, including sideloading mobile apps or emulating mobile games or cloud streaming Windows games through services like Restroid. And I'll leave links in the description for my video tutorials for how to do this. Anyway, I hope I answered your question about Parallels versus Crossover. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.